Hello and welcome to India Business Hour. I'm Shireen Bhan. Let's go straight to the headlines tonight. India's life insurance sector gets a fill if its customers line up to buy large long-term policies before the financial year ends. Private life insurance companies get the lion's share of business with a 35% jump in March premium collections. LIC drags the overall numbers lower as its premium collections drop 32%. IT major HCL tax fourth quarter numbers are largely in line with estimates. Net profit slips a lower than expected 2.8% and constant currency revenues drop a little over 1%. The company gives out a better than expected revenue growth guidance for FI24, says its deal pipeline is near an all-time high. The RBI may have held rates at its last meeting, but the members of the Monetary Policy Committee are unanimous in raising concerns over rising prices. Say the war on inflation is far from over. The minutes of the April meeting show RBI Governor reiterates there is no pivot in the policy, only a pause. In a first of its kind move, the Reserve Bank invites the boards of public and private sector banks to discuss governance issues. The two meetings will be held in Mumbai and Delhi in the last week of May. Air India Pilots Union opposed the revised salary structure offered by the airline. Pilots claim the terms and conditions are unfair, hostile and unethical. Warn of unrest if they're forced to sign the new compensation contract. CAP's newly appointed managing director and CEO says the internal succession plan had been in the works for a while. Arnab Banerjee adds he sees huge opportunity in Europe and Latin America. That's a CNBC TV 18 exclusive. Apple inaugurates its second India store inside a Delhi mall. CEO Tim Cook welcomes hundreds of enthusiastic fans. CNBC TV 18 learns a tech giant to sort a continuation of policy. Continued support for component ecosystem from the government. Day three of a same-sex marriage plea hearing in the Supreme Court. The center raises apprehensions on the impact parents from the LGBTQ community could have on their children. The Chief Justice asks whether children of heterosexual couples are not at risk when they see parents engaging in domestic violence. Petitioners argue that center's assertion that homosexuality is an urban elitist concept is incorrect and insensitive. A Surat court dismisses Congress leader Rahul Gandhi's plea seeking a stay on his conviction in a defamation case over the Modi surname remark. The court observes Gandhi's disqualification as Lok Sabha MP is not an irreparable loss to him. The Congress says they will explore other legal options. Five Indian Army personnel killed after an army truck catches fire in the Punch region of Jammu and Kashmir. Army officials say they're trying to ascertain the cause for the mishap. Ceasefire crumble in Sudan as heavy gunfire between army and the paramilitary forces continues during a U.S. broker 24-hour truce period. Thousands of residents flee the capital. The death toll in the country now close to 300. Well, straight to the day's market action. The Lull Street snapping its three-day losing streak. A range bound session saw the Nifty and the Sensex ending the day flat. Financials on a strong footing with the Nifty Bank outperforming the blue chips. But here's a CNBC TV 18 exclusive. India's life insurance sector has received a fillip as customers have begun lining up to buy long large long-term policies before the financial year ends. Private life insurance companies get the lion's share of the business with a 33% jump in March premium collections. Yash is standing by with the analysis of the numbers. Yash. Well, Shireen, clearly people have made complete use of those two months before these uh, long life insurance policies, savings policies start getting taxed. Uh, as far as the March numbers uh, are concerned, it's a complete reflection of that private sector has been a clear, clear and a strong winner on that front. So as far as the industry is concerned, private side, the premium has grown by 35 percent, FY23 premium growing at 20 percent. And uh, to speak about individual companies, the strongest player this time around has been HDFC Life Insurance. March premium has grown at 83 percent, FY23 premium growing at 16 percent and March retail AP growing at 118% for the company. ICICI Potential Life, March premium growing at 31%, March retail AP, that saw a growth of 59%. Max Life Insurance, March premium growth at 43%, March retail AP, again a strong number of 60%. SPI Life Insurance, the March premium grew by 23%, March retail AP saw a growth of 12%. Now, let's speak about the losers. That was LIC uh, solely, which dragged the industry number as well. 
March premium for LIC was down 32% and uh, the retail AP for the month was up just by about 10%. What that did was that dragged the life insurance industry numbers down as well. So the March premium for the entire industry was down 13% on a year-on-year -year basis and FI23 premium just grew by about 18%. All right, Yash, many thanks for joining us. From insurance to the big earnings today, ITCL Tech Q4 earnings largely in line with estimates. Net profit comes in meeting street estimates. Uh, while margins have seen a marginal miss, the company has given out a revenue guidance of 16 to 18% for FI24. Rima joins us now. Rima, uh, as far as ITCL Tech is concerned, no negative surprise, unlike what we saw with TCS and Infosys. Thanks so much for that. So it's a largely in-line set of HCL technology, but in such a macro environment, uncertain environment, no negative news is actually good news and is a positive surprise. So HCL Tech's top line has fallen by 1.2% in constant currency terms quarter on quarter, in line with expectation. EBIT margins are down 140 basis points to 18.2%, slightly worse than what the street was anticipating, but the other metrics in Q4 are looking up. Deal wins are at more than $2 billion. The company continues to add to its headcount. Attrition has moderated on a sequential basis, stands at 19.5%, and the deal pipeline is at the highest ever level. For FI24, the company has guided for a 6 to 8% top line revenue growth. Uh, this is at the upper end of street expectations. The street expectations vary from 4% at the lower end to 8% at the upper end. So the FI24 guidance is not so bad. Uh, margin guidance is at 18 to 19%, largely in line with street expectations and it compares with an 18.2% margins that the company delivered in FI23. Our ramp-ups have happened on time and we've transitioned some large clients. Uh, we've also had some good uh, programs uh, in our uh, financial services clients around cloud adoption and modernization. If, if I just break financial services into uh, banking, capital markets and insurance, I think uh, uh, both capital markets and insurance is where we had the maximum growth. Uh, telecom, uh, as I called out even last quarter, uh, we see uh, cut in discretionary spend to be a little sharp. Uh, that's why you'll see a 5% plus decline. We're cautiously optimistic of what would uh, further span out in these two segments. Well, that's HCL Tech. As Rima was pointing out, no negative surprise. RBI may have held rate at its last meeting, but the members of the Monetary Policy Committee are unanimous in raising concerns over rising prices. External members of the RBI MPC say the war on inflation is far from over. Listen in. And until we are sure that we are moving towards the target in a sustainable manner, uh, we, we cannot assure that there will be no further rise in repo rates. It will be data-based. That is why we don't say it is a pause, and that is why we have supported the stance this time of withdrawal of accommodation. But understanding that is that we may not have re reached our final uh, repo rate hike. My disagreement is essentially about the word withdrawing. Uh, when all the accommodation has already been withdrawn, and you have gone back to where the easing cycle started in 2019, you can't use the word withdrawal. If you want to say that, you must say that you're going to tighten. You can't say you're going to withdraw accommodation. All the accommodation that has been done since 2019 has already been withdrawn. You're back to that level. The outlook for growth certainly, you know, I guess is, um, uh, you know, it, it is uh, faced with the external uh, demand weakness. And I think the, uh, as far as inflation is concerned, the projections are uh, for, you know, for an inflation rate below 6%. So I think the concern really is that um, uh, if the growth also slows down, I guess, um, and then the inflation rate remains high, I mean, that is certainly not something that uh, is um, uh, you know, useful. Well, minutes of the MPC. Now, in what is the first of its kind meeting, the Reserve Bank of India has invited the boards of directors of private and public sector banks to a conference next month. Sources tell CNBC TV 18, the RBI governor is likely to address governance issues, among other matters. Ritu joins us now with the details on the significance of this meeting. Ritu. Well, thanks for that. It's very rare that you see entire boards of banks gathered together under one roof and rarer still to have the Reserve Bank of India governor address them all directly. And so it's a significant development because 
We've been given to understand from sources that the Reserve Bank has invited the boards of directors of both public and private sector banks for two in-person day-long meetings which are scheduled to be held first on the 22nd of May in New Delhi with select banks and then on the 29th May in Mumbai with the other banks. Now the agenda which we've reviewed says that during these meetings the Reserve Bank of India Governor Shakti Kanta Das is going to address the boards on matters relating to governance issues, ethics, the role of boards and assurance functionalities of banks as well as set the supervisory expectations as far as RBI is concerned. Now the top brass of RBI is expected to be present for these meetings. So apart from the RBI governor, deputy governors and senior officials from RBI's Department of Regulation and Supervision are also expected to participate. Now this comes in the backdrop of instances of governance issues which have come to light in some banks in the past and the finance minister has also been giving repeated calls for improving governance levels in boards, especially when it comes to public sector banks. So let's see how this first-of-a-kind meeting transpires. But the bankers that we've been speaking to have welcomed this sort of consultative approach which is being followed by Governor Shakti Kanta Das. Ritu, many thanks for joining us. Now, Air India pilot unions have warned of unrest if they're forced to sign the revised salary structure. Pilots claim the new terms and conditions are, and I quote, unfair, hostile and unethical. The airline says there is no recognized union, adding that the terms are fair and on par with global standards. Madhiha joins us now with more. Madhiha, what exactly are the pilots unhappy about? Well, employee unrest may not augur well for Air India at a time when it is expanding its wings. The issue here is about revised employment contract that Air India sent to pilots and crew on the 17th of April. The two pilots unions, uh, the Indian Commercial Pilots Association and Indian Pilots Guild, have refused to sign the contract. So what exactly has not gone down well with the pilots? Sources say the revised contract allows the company to transfer pilots to any station or network. The company reserves the right to terminate pilots with immediate effect. The company also reserves the right to redesignate pilots which can upgrade or downgrade their salaries. Another major problem area is the sudden changes made to the roster. The contract says pilots must keep themselves available all the time for flying duties. Another point of contention is that senior commanders promoted to management cadre cannot participate in union activities. Now here's what the pilots feel about these terms. They allege the HR has the power to manipulate working conditions of pilots. Pilots claim barring senior commanders from union activities is aimed at undermining the union's functions. They say sudden modification to rosters will disrupt their personal and social life. A major bone of contention is the new CTC which is subject to 70 hours of flying. Pilots say they may not get 70 hours of flying time, hence they won't be eligible to get the said salary. And the fixed allowance of 40 hours will also be given if the pilot flies for those many hours. Meanwhile, Air India has dismissed these claims, saying that the terms are fair and on par with global standards. The airline has also said there is uh, no recognized union in the airline and a large number of pilots have signed the contract. All right, Madhya, many thanks for joining us. We will head into a short break, but up next, day three of the same-sex marriage plea hearing. The center raises apprehensions on the impact that parents from the LGBT community could have on their children. That and more when we return. It's okay for us to nod for everything because we are parents. But your wealth presents CNBC TV 18 Future Female Forward, the Women's Collective. Presented by HSBC. Co presented by HCL Tech. Knowledge partner Deloitte. Industry partner Vicky. Associate partner Reliance Industries Limited. It's day three of the same-sex marriage plea hearing in the Supreme Court. The center raising apprehensions on the impact parents from the LGBT community could have on their children. The Chief Justice has asked whether children of heterosexual couples are not at risk when they see parents engaged in domestic violence. Ashmit joins us now with the latest developments. Uh, Ashmit, uh, uh, the Chief clearly wants to get this over and done with as quickly as possible. Uh, take us to where things currently stand in terms of arguments and how soon we could see arguments conclude. 
Well, as you pointed out, today was day three of the arguments that took place, the third consecutive day. The petitioners essentially have been arguing, and what's important is that uh, they have been pressing that as far as uh, the court's intervention is concerned, not only is it uh, required, it is also, in fact, uh, not opposed to any parliamentary or any legislative activities uh, that the court can, in fact, take the initiative that it needn't wait for the parliament to act. Uh, what's also interesting is that one of the councils appearing in this case argued uh, that quite unlike what the centre has argued, uh, that this is an urban elitist phenomena, uh, the, uh, the lawyer, in fact, pointed out before the top court that he's representing a couple which involves uh, a, a partner from a small town in, Har in Haryana and a, and a partner from a small town in Punjab and arguing that it was insensitive of the centre to argue that this is an urban elitist concept. Further, uh, the petitioners argued that while the centre bats on one hand by issuing an act uh, for protection of transgenders, to argue that transgenders cannot marry and enjoy the same rights is purely discrimination and cannot be uh, tenable under the constitutional framework. Keeping in mind uh, these arguments, the CGI made some pointed observations. In fact, the observation was aimed at the centre's submission as to what impact an LGBT couple will have uh, on their own children. Towards that end, uh, the Chief Justice reasoned that uh, the impact of a heterosexual couple engaging in domestic violence where a husband beats the wife over alcohol would be far more deleterious, would be far more dangerous. And in fact, in doing so, also take a, took a dig at social media, saying that this comment will probably inspire sharp comments and trolls on social media, but that that, the Chief Justice said, was the name of the game and that questions that he's raising in court are getting answered by trolls on social media. Mm -hmm. Now, that marks the end of day three. The arguments, we understand, will resume on Monday. That will mark day four. And day four is when the petitioners are expected to conclude their arguments. Ashraf many thanks for joining us. HDFC Bank has said that the RBI has approved the appointment of Kaizad Barucha as its deputy managing director and Bhavesh Zaveri as the bank's executive director for a period of three years. Both Barucha and Zaveri have more than three decades of experience in the banking sector. Fortis Healthcare will acquire Meteor Hospitals in Gurugram for 225 crore rupees. The healthcare company has signed definitive agreements with the VPS group for the acquisition. The transaction is expected to close by the end of July. Z Entertainment has begun settlement talks with creditors in a bid to close its merger with the Sony Group. As per Bloomberg report, it says the company is in separate talks with IDBI Bank, Axis Bank and JC Flowers. Remember, the company owes a total of 2 billion rupees to these three creditors, which it must clear to complete the merger. Bipro Consumer Care and Lighting is set to expand its footprint in the packaged food category with the acquisition of Kerala-based brand Brahmins, the company's second acquisition in the food segment after Nirapara uh, that took place last year. CNBC TV 18 spoke with the CEO, Vinit Agarwal. He says the food space in India is a large category and may give them a major fillip in business growing forward. Great brands, uh, uh, great customer recall, uh, uh, very good, strong manufacturing processes, and that gave us confidence. Very good team, okay. and that gave us confidence that, yes, these are brands that we want to acquire. The foods is a much larger category per se in India, uh, and that itself can give us a major growth, uh, uh, Philip, going forward. Hopefully, we should be launching snacks uh, in the next, let's say, uh, six to nine months. Uh, that would be organically, and the rest, these are brands. But I would say that these two brands came in a little early than what we had anticipated, and a lot of our energy has gone into uh, acquiring and now running it correctly. Uh, so I'm just hoping that it doesn't take away from our own internal effort of snacks. Well, here's a Network 18 exclusive. The central government has asked India's drug regulator to f regulate fixed-dose combination drugs. Ministry sources say that a ban on select cocktail drugs which contain irrational drug combinations is likely to be announced within a month. Fixed-dose combinations are medicines that combine more than one drug in a single pill. SEAT's newly appointed managing director and CEO Arna Banerjee has said the company has been working on its succession plan for a while. Speaking exclusively to CNBC TV 18, he added that the board deliberated on the succession plan after Anand Koenka decided to step up to a larger role in the RPG group. Anand uh, decided uh, to step up into a larger role in the RPG group. Uh, he is now looking after Zensar, SEAT, uh, as well as uh, group strategy and new businesses for these two companies as well as for the entire group. So when this transition uh, was decided upon, the SEAT board uh, deliberated upon a succession planning. This uh, is not an all of a sudden uh, decision. 
Well, from corporate news to the national headlines that we are tracking this evening, a Surat court has dismissed Congress leader Rahul Gandhi's plea seeking a stay on his conviction in a defamation case. The court observing that Gandhi's disqualification as Lok Sabha MP is not an irreparable loss to him. Meanwhile, the Congress says it will explore other legal options. India has reported more than 12,000 new COVID cases in the last 24 hours, and that's a rise of 2,000 cases as compared to the previous day. However, we've seen recoveries go up by 10,000 in the last 24 hours as well. Maharashtra government has activated 25 hospitals dedicated to COVID-19. Heat wave continues to scorch several states within the country. A study conducted by researchers from Cambridge and other universities reveals that 90% of India could be impacted by the abnormal rise in temperature. The study has also highlighted that Delhi is particularly vulnerable. Apple CEO Tim Cook inaugurating the tech giant's second store in India, this time in the capital. Hundreds of enthusiastic fans lining up at Select City Mall in Saket. Cook was seen greeting uh, with fans clicking selfies. The Apple store in New Delhi, of course, is smaller than the Mumbai store, but is based on similar format. Ashmit Kumar and Shibani Gharat bring you a mood check. Visit. Of course, the Apple store is the big marker here, but outside of that, this trip marks an expression of commitment by Tim Cook, by Apple to India. Number one is a market. Looking at the market in 2022 alone, uh, Apple sold as many as 7 million products. That's as far as India as a market. But more than that, India is beginning to act as a manufacturing and export hub. Joining me now is a very special guest, uh, likely to be one of the first few customers to in fact enter this uh, Apple store right behind me. Uh, his name is Ranveer, but what makes him special? Let's take a look. Hi Ranveer. Hi. Hi, my name is Ashmit. Uh, so you woke up really early to come this morning? Yes. Yeah. But what brought you here? Are you really excited about the Apple store launch? Yes, and also I wanted to show coring on Apple Swift to Tim Cook. Wow. And which is your favorite Apple device? If you meet him, what will you tell him? Uh, iPad. Your iPad is the favorite one. What can you tell us about coding? You've already begun coding. How old are you? I'm five years old. Joining me is also his father. Uh, Chandrajot, uh, thank you so much uh, for joining us uh, on CNBC uh, TV 18. First question, what inspires you? I mean, it's an early morning for you to wake up here. It's quite crowded. It's quite busy. But you're still passionate enough to come here for the store. If you meet Tim Cook, what are the first few words? I'm really uh, going to meet him with all my passion because I've followed Steve Jobs for two decades now. And this T-shirt which I'm wearing is actually from the Apple headquarters from Cupertino. Uh, I follow Steve Jobs for almost two decades. I read about him. Uh, I don't think so. I've missed any of his speeches. And I'm so proud that, you know, he's already into this line and really excited to meet Tim Cook. <music> Shivani, you've had a hectic four days. You were there in BKC, you're here as well. Tell us about how this store looks, how it compares against the BKC store, and of course, the palpable excitement amongst the customers who've come. Yes, so the first store opened in Mumbai, which is uh, Apple BKC, and this is Apple Saket. And let me tell you honestly, Ashmit, this store is slightly underwhelming as compared to the BKC store, which is large. It's huge. It's uh, It has two floors of Apple products on display, uh, whereas this one should be approximately 8,000 to 8,500 square feet. And that's it then on this edition of India Business Hour. But before we go, not good news. SpaceX Starship rocket has suffered a mid-flight failure after its historic launch. The Starship was designed to carry cargo and people into space and is critical to NASA's plan to return astronauts to the moon. The company said the spacecraft underwent rapid unscheduled disassembly before stage separation.